What I really want to get into, though, and the good stuff, um, as I like to say, uh, is is the vacuum packed uh, insulated process that this style uh, of research and and trading really offers you. And what I was skeptical of early on, and a question I often get a lot of the time is how how did you make this good market call? How did you know when to be in cash? How did you know when to start investing again and those types of things? Um, and what I normally always tell people is you have to have a process. Uh, and your process has to keep you insulated. And what I mean by that is where you, you are playing your game and not somebody else's. Uh, or for example, you, your process has led you to a position uh, or opinion on the market and you're not gonna let an economic data point, somebody else's opinion influence that. And I think one of the biggest advantages that's also an extreme disadvantage is the fact that everybody now has the ability to trade any market anywhere, anytime on your phone, on computers like we're on right now. I mean, you can get up in the middle of the night and trade, you know, currencies, other global stock markets, cryptocurrency, all this kind of stuff. Uh, that that's an incredible advantage, but it, the noise factor is the incredible disadvantage. And I think you and I have talked about this in the past, Richard, but the reality is your process should automatically keep you um, insulated in a way that, that you're focused on what you're doing. So meaning that it doesn't matter how scary things look or the headlines are, or those types of things, you're simply following the market. And probably the, this is one of the biggest lessons I, I can remember early on being very skeptical. Uh, I, had the, I had the good fortune of at, at, at the very first master trader program I went to, there weren't a lot of us there. And I was sitting next to uh, a guy who was a former institutional client of Mark's, I think from the 90s. Uh, I won't mention his name. He's a very private guy, but he's a very successful trader and somebody I, I want to becoming uh, pretty good friends with. And I said to him, so you're telling me if I just screen stocks and, and sort of go through this routine and this process that they will guide me. I don't need to look at all this eco fundamental data and I don't need to watch news and all these other things. And, and he goes, yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Uh, and he had been, uh, again, he was a client of, of uh, I think, Mark's back when he was selling institutional research on, on Wall Street in the 90s, but then had been an independent trader himself for over a decade and had been very successful. And like anybody, I, I just thought that seems a little overly simplistic. Uh, the reality, though, Richard, is nothing could be uh, closer to the truth in terms of how simple it is. Simple in theory, hard in practice sometimes. And especially now, because now not only do you have instant news at your fingertips, you've got financial Twitter and a zillion opinions. And of course, everybody's an expert on everything all the time, uh, where if you, you have to have a process that allows you to ignore all that. Uh, one of the things though I remember Mark said was that in his, in his old shop, he wouldn't even let people bring in newspapers. He wouldn't let them bring in other firms' research. He wouldn't let them, and nothing else was allowed uh, because he didn't want anything causing, you know, any type of a distraction from, again, their vacuum packed process and how they were doing things. And I can't uh, underestimate how, how much that has helped me uh, in, in the long run. And really, one of the best examples is, you know, after COVID, uh, there was, an extreme amount of fear and pessimism, as I'm sure you remember, and anybody yeah. who has been doing this for longer than a few years will remember, you know, we had this enormous break in the market, but the, the headlines were rightfully so pretty scary. And there were sort of twofold, if you remember, it was global depression or people calling for 1929 in terms of the economy all over again, those types of things. And then, of course, there was the is this going to be the Spanish flu where 5% of the population dies because of, 
you know, multiple waves. And of course, everybody was convinced there was going to be this massive second wave. And, uh, and lo and behold, you know, we had, uh, I think, a, a risk model buy signal in early April. And then stocks started setting up uh, around May. And it was, if you weren't sticking to your process, you wouldn't have been buying them. And I know lots of people said, ah, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to follow the news and not the process. And they just missed out on what was an incredible opportunity. And there were actually multiple incredible opportunities. So, you know, one of the biggest things I learned and that I'd been doing this for a while, it wasn't like I was brand new. I've seen many iterations of this, but this was one of those scarier ones, you know, where you're sitting there going, mm, I'm not so sure. Follow stocks. It's a market of stocks. If you want to follow news, I, I, you know, go to journalism school and uh, or, or figure out how to be a reporter, because if those people were good at trading, that's what they'd be doing. Um, their job is to you know, push out headlines. A lot of these headlines are stale or old. Same with economic data. Um, I'm not saying, uh, you know, you completely ignore 100 uh, percent you know, of all news, but the price action uh, and specifically how stocks are acting. You can you can read those headlines, but you cannot let that into your decision making when it comes to trading. So that's sort of, you know, paramount uh, commandment number one, if you will. Uh, the, the second thing I would say, you know, that is has really been paramount to my success. Well, one of the things, you know, that I've tried to teach and it just becomes axiomatic is the idea of always thinking risk first and you know, almost every successful trader, I think I've known if they either do this intuitively well, uh, whether they would use this kind of language or whether they think about it, but that they're always uh, calculating or trying to get odds on their money if you're using uh, gambling terminology or they're trying to make good risk adjusted bets. And what I mean by that is on average over time, their, their expectation is to be way ahead because they're thinking about uh, the relationship between risk reward and specifically then creating that asymmetric relationship. So whereby they can, they can be wrong one, two, three, four times in a row, but very quickly, once they're right, uh, make all of that money back and a lot more. People are often surprised when I tell them, you know, I'm I'm usually wrong a little more than I'm right. And there, well, how, how could that be? Uh, well, because I'm, I'm structuring in asymmetry. I'm layering in asymmetric uh, reward to every decision I make. And <clears throat> this, this plays out in a few different ways. But I think one of the most important is this idea of if, if I like an idea, or, or let's say it's, you know, in most cases, it's a stock. Uh, I want to buy a stock but I can't find a good low risk way to get in, then I have to either wait or just pass on the situation because I wanna get multiples of my risk. So, and this is one of the reasons why stocks or markets that are wildly volatile, and the way I would define that, or we would define that is that they are carving back and forth in huge swaths. A mistake people often make is they think, a momentum situation is very volatile. Not necessarily. Usually that, you know, if that momentum is moving one way, that's, I, you know, we would define that as alpha, not volatility. It's that, it's that knife that's cutting back and forth um, that can really uh, cut a, a sort of low risk directional trader to shreds. And so, yeah, we're, I am trying to find a way to get on board something that I think has a potential asymmetric payout. I can't understate this. Um, this may seem remedial to some folks, uh, but that, that is ultimately what is, is driving a lot of my decisions. So maybe I love uh, you know, a certain story, a certain stock, a sector, uh, or I really find it interesting. But if I can't find an asymmetric way to put it on, meaning that where I'm right, I'm gonna get multiples of my average risk, then I, I either have to pass or wait. Thank you.